game of knowing. All right, man. Welcome to Crow Triple Seven Radio. This is episode 588. Jason Lingren is with me, and Alex Michael, also known as Conspiracy Music Guru, returns. For those of you who don't know, Alex Michael wrote the theme song to this podcast. Uh, way back in the day, I was using a different tune and uh, came to find out that it was being held as a copyright if- issue, even though it was given to us free to use. So I asked Alex if he could write something, and that's how we got that. We're going to cover his new music, and part of what we're going to do is the solfeggios that he has put out, and it is mind-blowingly good. All of his stuff is mind-blowingly good. For those who have followed along and remembered what I said about reprinting my house, back in the day, I used to get weird sounds in my ear, buzzing, humming, uh, just annoying things going on in my ears that I attributed to frequencies. So I set about reprinting my house. I used crystals, I used music heavily, and other things. This new Solfeggio album, I'm going to be putting it on my whole house audio, and I'm going to be running this all night long when we sleep, all the time. It's that good. And you guys are going to get a sample of some of how good it is. Uh, Anyhow, welcome, Jason. And a fine good morning. All right. Welcome, Alex Michael. And right out of the gate, let's tell folks where they can find you and this wonderful, wonderful Solfeggio work. Thank you for the great intro. Good afternoon, everyone from sunny Spain. Yeah, conspiracy music guru, if people can remember those three words. Getting quite censored now. So when you type that into Google, you won't find my website. It's now been sort of pushed back to the fourth page, which is a little bit frustrating. So you'll just have to type the URL straight into your browser, conspiracymusicguru.com. And that will give you all my stuff. Or alternatively, you can go to YouTube, type Conspiracy Music Guru. You will find my channel with all my crazy videos and all the links underneath the videos. So for those who are hearing about Alex for the first time, uh, you need to go listen to the music he's done, the parody music and other things. He's done Flat Earth. He's done every genre from heavy metal to country to everything in between. And it is a real joyride to catch some of his parody tunes. Jason, you want to add something in before we jump into the meat and potatoes? Everything Alex has ever put out is really, really well done. I'm very impressed and very glad that I can call him my friend, too. I love the fact that there's another musician out there who sees things in a way that's very similar to the way I see it. Well, he's as good as anyone you'll ever buy off the shelf. And that's a fact, not just his musical skill, but his abilities in the editing room as well. It's all very good and top notch and what's it been alex how how long ago do you figure you rewrote my uh my intro music for me do you do you recall it's been like two three years well the last time i came here for confession thank you father for having me on again it was, uh, <laughs> two, it was, was two years ago that was episode 411 did i make it yeah i made it before that so it's well over two it's got to be three years and actually rose if you can put in the past episodes so i can see them but yeah, it's been that long. And it was weird. The, the initial music that I had, which everyone loved, was given to me because I was going through a place because I didn't want to deal with ads and all that stuff. And they said, oh, here, this is free. Well, one day I read the fine print and that's how they hook you. You got to be careful because if you quit using them, they can come back and copyright on the very music they gave you and told you you could use for free, which is how we ended up dumping it. And to be fair, what you wrote is miles better than what I was initially using, but what you wrote was kind of based on that. But so what's new? What have you been up to outside of the Solfeggio? Have you still been doing parody work and other things? Yeah, there's been three albums and six children's books since we spoke last. The last time we spoke, I'd released a bunch of singles in many different genres, but they wouldn't suit one album because they differed in genre so much. So I thought, why not take these songs and just make acoustic versions of them? So I did a an unplug album and the classics on there, like I told you so and big farmer and television watching news believer, which were originally sort of heavy rock songs. I I just stripped them right back raw and using only sort of uh, unplugged instruments. So it's got a real natural sound. And that was the album unplugged, very conscious, very conscious lyrics. I tackle many subjects in that album from the vaccine agenda to chemtrails and you name it, it goes on and on and on. And it just has a really nice acoustic. It's kind of reminiscent of the MTV acoustic unplugged era of the 90s. So it's got that kind of sound to it. And uh, after that, I got very frustrated and decided to put out a rock album and uh, belted out some frustrations. That album's called Black Sheep. 
And recently, just this Sunday on the 7th, I released an album that has seven songs on it, all seven minutes long. And that was True Solfeggio Volume 2. So it's been a busy couple of years, man. How did you arrive at the solfeggio you used? If I recall, when you were doing the first one, you didn't necessarily do it by the book. You did it by ear, didn't you? Well, not quite. When I was first introduced to the idea of solfeggio, I was looking at a lot of stuff online and I came across a guy by the name of Jamie Buterf, B-U-T-U-R-F-F, Jamie Buterf on YouTube. And he has a playlist, 432 Hertz. Click on that. And he's he's saying that there's, there's a lot of misinformation in the solfeggio healing frequency information area. And true enough, when you start searching solfeggio on Google, it's like typing in flat earth into Google. You're going to be presented with glow propaganda. You type in our vaccine safe into Google, you're going to be presented with big pharma propaganda. And it seems the same is so with solfeggio healing frequencies. You type that in, you're going to get solfeggio healing frequency propaganda, this 528 DNA healing frequencies and blah, blah, blah. And Jamie Buterf was saying there's a lot of misinformation in that area. So he put forward this, you know, these true solfeggio healing frequencies, like these are the ones And I'm like, okay, take it with a pinch of salt. Let's use these frequencies, put it into music. And, you know, all of the healing music I'd heard up to then was all kind of droney synths and and jungle noises and rain and beach, you know, and, and, and waves and all that sort of stuff. And it really had no structure to it. It was really unlistenable for me. So I thought, well, why not take these frequencies that this guy is putting forward and embed them into, into some tracks that actually have structure, you know, melody, you know, catchy. So the, the songs have an intro, they have a, a chorus, they have a bridge, and they're very memorable. And so I did that back in 2019, I think, and, uh, you know, just to see what would happen. And uh, as you've seen there, I put a link in the private chat, and, and I started gathering all of the feedback, and I didn't ask for it. People would just message me privately and say, this is what happened. This is what happened. It seems to be having quite a profound effect on people from a healing standpoint. So uh, it was like, uh, I mean, it's a scientific experiment, isn't it? Because you're, 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 it's testable, observable, repeatable, and you gauge the feedback. And I must have sold a few thousand of those by now. And um, gauging the feedback has been quite an incredible experience, seeing what it's actually doing to people. Um, if anybody is actually curious about seeing those testimonies, go to Conspiracy Music guru.com forward slash true dash solfeggio dash reviews and you'll see a bunch of uh, messages and, and testimonials the ones that i've remembered to keep and it's really really having a profound effect so these were just the frequencies that this guy recommended i just happened to put them into music in a way that other people hadn't done before gauged the feedback and stood back and went wow there's something to this and now fast forward sort of four or five years now and, and, and so many people are going please make another one please make another one and i'm like oh do you have any idea what it takes to make an album like that? I'd really have to take a deep breath and immerse myself for six months and obsess over it like I'll do with all of my musical projects. So I did that six to eight months ago and just jumped in and did another one. And I've just released it on Sunday and already the uh, the reviews are coming in. And it's been, you know, it's, it's very, very similar to the first, but I'm better now as a musician. I'm more competent as a producer. And uh, my, it just sounds, it, I, I mean, I would say it sounds incredible because it's my baby. I don't really let anything leave the studio until I'm absolutely in love with it myself. So it's like my little baby. I, you know, I, I went through months and months of labor pains and then popped out this little baby, and I love it so much because I know what it's going to do for people from a healing standpoint. What did you experience when you first started doing this, when you were doing the research for the first one and you were hearing these frequencies and then you were playing to it? Did you get any kind of uh, anything? What were you feeling? Did it do anything to you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to word it? Yeah, well, it's funny because um, I was uh, in contact with her. Her name is Jo, but uh, she was kind of a spiritual lady. And she had this machine, which was like an aura, aura photography machine, whether it's actually taking a photograph of your aura, I'm not sure, because you have to put your hand into this machine. But what it does, it does a, it's a readout of your bio field. And she did it before I was um, exposed to the 432 music that I was making. And then afterwards, and the difference in my quote unquote aura or bio field was just outstanding from a health standpoint it was saying that it was uh, aligning my chakra i don't even know if chakra was a thing the jury's out on that but you know this this readout showed two distinctly different patterns in my biofield before exposure to the music and after exposure to the music so that's you know a digital understanding of what's going on there but personally what i felt when i when i start when, when you play a, a pure sine wave 432 hertz frequency in the studio and it's coming out the speakers you turn your head you don't know where the sound is coming from. It's like bouncing off of the walls, bouncing off of the ceiling, off the floor, everywhere. And it's coming in from all directions. 
it's the weirdest, weirdest feeling. And I started realizing that when I was playing the music, I was getting more goosebumps. It was giving me shivers. And I've been in floods of tears with making my own music. It's like, what's going on on a biological level, cellular level? I don't know, but it's, it's so hard to put it into words. It really is just a feeling that, that just moves my soul. And other people will attest to that as well. So it's just, I had this feeling, I thought, well, let's put it out there and, and see if people have the same reaction. And they do. The minute you turn it on, the very moment you hear the first notes, you know. Yeah, those frequencies, it starts with just a sine wave frequency. And then I blend the music into it to get to, to introduce people to the music. And it kind of builds, it's kind of progressive, the, all of the tracks. And then I bring in the drums and then there's a catchy chorus and that. And it's just... Then you're immersed in the music. And this is what people don't do. People don't listen to music anymore, which is such a shame. They always have it on in the background. They always have it on while they're driving. They never really actually put on a really good set of quality headphones, shut their eyes, immerse themselves in the music and see what it, what it can actually do. If you did that with this solfeggio music, I believe that you could have some profound effects, almost spiritual. I agree. We mentioned the other day, and you guys were talking about it before we came on, the clip Rick Beato did about the grand fall of music and people take this personally, but I'm here to tell you he's spot on. We actually want to interview him. We're looking for someone who might be able to connect us because he's so busy, but I want to ask you a little bit about the solfeggios. So if I remember correctly, back in the day, I went to look them up and I found what you found. Oh, oh no, it's this frequency. No, it's that frequency, you know, all this misinformation, but apparently originally there were six tunes that were classified as solfeggio, six frequencies. Uh, I think the claim is that later someone, was it Jason, mathematically, they figured out another three to make a perfect wheel with nine? Yeah. So how many did you use to do this? Are you using six? Are you using nine? Or are you using something else? I'm using octaves. So for instance, in the heart track, for instance, on the first album, it's called heart. On the second album, it's called another heart. So I'm using three frequencies, and they're all octaves of each other. So one would be 128 hertz. You double that, it's an octave. So then you get 256, and then you get to 512 if you double that. That's correct, yeah. So what I've got in that particular song is three frequencies, all octaves. And the same happens with track one, track two, track three, track four. So yeah, track one would be 228 hertz. This is in B flat. So 228 hertz is a lower octave of B flat. And then you've got 456 hertz, which is double that. And then you've got 912 hertz. So in every track, I'm using three frequencies. I'm not just using one sine wave. I'm using an octave below and an octave above. What difference that, I mean, for what reason? I don't know, because people were saying it's, you know, 432 hertz below. And, and other people were saying it's 216. And other people were saying it's 86. So I'm like, well, why not use all three? So I put just, they're just simple octaves. So it sounds like one tone when actually there's three frequencies that are embedded into each track. If you go to my website, you'll see um, there's a graph where I'll show you uh, the frequencies that I'm using. And I think I know you well enough to make the statement that this is all recorded in 432 with the intention of laying it down in a healthy packaging, if that's the right way to say it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all of these frequencies only come from setting the initial A, the, the middle A, the keynote, at 432, you wouldn't get any of the other these. You wouldn't get 528, for instance, by tuning the keyboard to 432 hertz. And you mentioned intention there. Yeah, I mean, we all know how intention can affect water. Well, if I'm putting that kind of love, my heart and soul, into this kind of music, which I am doing, I obsess over it, and I am trying to change the world as cheesy as that sounds, and if I'm doing it from that standpoint and trying to heal, you know, I believe that sound waves are carriers of consciousness. So if I'm putting the right intent, the love, the heart, the soul, my spirit into this music, that is also making a difference. You know, I mean, we could talk mathematics. You know, there's some great mathematics and, and numerology when it comes to 432. But, it, you know, it, it might even boil down to simply intent. To me, what you're talking about is the big deal. It's the same reason your mother's food tastes better than everyone else because she loves you. And that love is in the creation that she's given you. And when you turn on these tracks, I mean, Rose sent it over to me so I could experience it before we did this episode. The moment that I heard it, I was like, this is going whole house. This is going to run all night, every night. 
I knew it instantly. And we're going to we're going to lay down some of it here for you folks to get a sample of. But you've got to realize that we are ruining the reporting to an acceptable level because we have to pay for the serving. But you should also uh, comprehend you can get these as hard copies or digital files. And if there are people out there who are interested in trying to reprint their house, as I say it, this would be a wonderful way to go as one of the major elements that you put into it. But in my book, the intention is such an important aspect. And when we go to school in the West, we have all the subtlety wrung out of our bodies. We are taught to only recognize what is gross. And that is why things like intention, like when you're speaking, you, you said this might sound cheesy to some people. Well, that's the reason why we've been taught not to appreciate the importance of the subtlety. And from where I'm coming from, subtlety is what drives this place. That's the difference between masters and non-masters, subtlety. You know, what's sad is that we live in a time of the best technology, but a lot of people aren't even utilizing it. Like, for instance, I picked up a while ago a really nice, they call them a DAC or a digital audio converter. I plug that in with a really, really good set of headphones and listen to music that way when I want to appreciate music for music's sake. And it's just night and day difference between just throwing it on your phone and letting it play in the background. You're immersed in the music and you're hearing details that you might not even have noticed were there in the first place. And if you do that with especially something like what he's got created here, my God. That's how I listen to it. When Rose kicked it over into the folder for me, I put on my good earphones to listen to it and everything changed. The whole atmosphere of my space changed instantly. And the fact that the stereo aspect of the recordings. So let's lay down one of those tracks now. And did you plan on running the heart track that we spoke about? That'll be track four. If you're looking for the heart tracks, what another heart. It's already had quite a few people in tears. It's quite an emotional song, quite an emotional soundscape. And the fact that 512 hertz is supposed to be the resonating frequency of the heart speaks volumes to me. Since we were talking about that one, let's put that one down now and then we'll come back to continue. All right. So let's take a short break. Here is the heart track. And remember, you're listening to a acceptably ruined version of this. It's not going to be at the same level if you get the real recording or a hard copy because we have to reduce the quality to stream it out because we serve all of our own content. But here it is from Alex Michael, the conspiracy music guru, the heart track of his true Solfeggio album, volume two.
All right. So, I mean, what did you guys think? Uh, That is quite a thing. I hope folks at least had headphones on while they were doing it. And again, you're going to want to hear that clean and not the version that we just kind of crunched so that we could get it down the pipe and afford to do so. But I was reading through some of the reviews. Matter of fact, Jason, let's let's read a couple of these reviews. It's insane. I saw one here that someone listening to us was introduced to Alex, but you want to pick out a couple? Yeah, there's a couple about us, actually. I loved the first set of True Solfagio you created. I listened to them often. I remember hearing you for the first time when you were on Crow. Left me in awe with goosebumps and tears. I'm looking forward to listening to these in their entirety. Thank you, Alex. There it is. Yeah, it's beautiful. When you, when you, I mean, there's a bunch of reviews there, and we haven't got time to go through them all. But if you, if you go and read them, I mean, I'm really people are having spiritual experiences with them. You know, people. I'm curious. I mean, it's like I'm a musical doctor in a way, which I, I never really expected to be doing something like this, you know, curing people. If you'd have said to me, you know, years ago, like the very idea of healing frequencies, I would have dismissed it as new age woo-woo. But as we know, people like Royal Raymond Wright were, were just obliterating cancer cells with frequency. Everything exists in frequency. As you rightly say, bro, if it exists in nature, it vibrates. So the idea now is, so I'm now absolutely convinced that I can heal people with music. And it's kind of it's a beautiful thing. It really is. So uh, maybe I should be concentrating on this type of music because I've done all the, the parody stuff and the comedy stuff. And I've put tons and tons of information and very matter of fact and just hardcore information right in your face. And my back catalog should be enough to wake a sleeping horse. So why continue with that? Why continue doing these, you know, please wake up, please wake up kind of music videos? And just, uh, but now it's kind of, I'm, I'm at a fork in the road, really. Should I continue doing the funny stuff and all that, which has been done? I've, you know, I've ripped the ass out of it, so to speak. So, or should I just carry on, you know, being this, I don't know, like audio alchemist, maybe is a way of putting it. But um, I, I'm still experimenting and I'm, I'm still waiting for the general feedback on this second album. But I know it's going to do great things. So, um, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, strange turn of events for me but the more heart and soul i put into it the more intent i put into it, the more love i put into it i can actually you know really reach people on a, on a spiritual way it's a beautiful thing let me frame this up real quick when you buy a recoweg product and i'm going to say this because i know so many people that follow here have found the magic in recoweg when you get one of those little vials if you take it out of the vial so you could see it you're basically looking at water with the spirit of a plant, which is methyl or ethyl alcohol, which is very little. But what's actually in there, if you're going to describe it, it's water with a certain frequency, a vibration of a plant in the water. That's why it works. So the idea of healing with frequency, anyone who's used the Recoweg, that is what you are doing. You are literally doing that. Anyhow, Jason. So there's one more here I really think we should read out here. I had never heard of Alex before I heard him on Crow 777's podcast yesterday. Oh my word, I can't even describe the feeling. Crow had said when you listen to 432 music, you feel it to your core. And then he played heart, and within the first minute, I was in tears. Cried throughout the entire song. Chills all over, too. I am buying his album and plan to listen regularly. Wow. Just wow. Thank you for all you do, Alex. You have a true God-given talent, and I can't wait to hear more. Much love from Kansas. There it is. There's a slew of these. Here's another. I downloaded your CD the day I heard you on Crow 777. I have so much to tell you and ask for that matter. I will tell you, though, that I listened to the new CD twice, back to back the first day. I have an anxiety disorder, and truly, that day, my anxiety lifted off me, but for a while but it changed me. I'm very anxious for your next CD. And I think this might've been response to volume one. So this individual should be happy because the volume two, it's just perfect. So isn't that a beautiful thing to read those comments of which there are, there are many, and it, I, I kind of get emotional listening to that feedback. I mean, what am I doing? What, what's happening there? I mean, it's, it, I mean, this is what music should be. This is the polar opposite of what these parasites want musically. Look at the music industry. Look at what we're subjected to. Look at the bastardization of it. I'm trying to reverse that. And when you do, and you put the intent, and you put it in the right frequency, this is what can happen. I didn't even see this. I got to read this one too, because everybody knows of the authentic natural purity you find in a very young life. Listen to this. 
when I'm driving and my three month old son starts crying, I turn on the solfeggio and he immediately calms down. We love your music. Thank you. It goes on and on. People can go to the website and check out the reviews. But I wanted to mention this. If you go to the website, conspiracymusicguru.com, check out his albums. The first Sofeggio is there. The one we're covering now is volume two. But if you're one of the many people out there who is teaching your children at home and you're tired of the mainstream nonsense, you're going to want to get like the Flat Earth Man. It's kind of a parody but it's a powerful teaching tool and it is completely suitable for young ears to hear. And then some of the other stuff is a little more in your face. There's an unplugged, but I was introduced to you actually through the flat earth man album. And every time you drop one of those tracks, what do you think, Jason, they spun around the internet verse like six times a day for the first month. Yeah, it was a big deal. Really, Alex, I think you became quite the sensation for a good couple of years there. You were even doing in person for a little while, didn't you? Didn't you go to a couple of conferences? And- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that was fun because I was still sort of finding my way with the whole cosmological, that whole heliocentric lie. I was sort of really sort of battling my way through that, just trying to, you know, knock down every domino and putting it into music. And me being the introvert that I am, didn't want to put my my true sort of personality out there because my family and friends would think, oh, you're crazy. So I, I just put on a hat and some shades and kind of put on a funny voice and pretended I was from the deep south and started making talk like this, right? And, and there's the flat earth man. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was, uh, I didn't expect it to have, it was just me hiding really because I'm an introvert. Let's put it out like this and I'm hiding behind my shades and still do it to this day really. I'm always wearing some kind of eyewear. I'm very introverted like that. So I thought I'd, I'd put that out there and see, and, and, and then it really resonated with people. It was kind of a genius thing to do. I didn't set out for this. Oh, this is going to be genius, but it was just that it just, it really works because highlighting all of those bullet points about, you know, what NASA are doing and the, the heliocentric model and putting that in a five minute song and just highlighting all the bullet points. It's, it became very shareable because it's comedic as well. You know, and people love to share things that are comedic, even if they don't agree with my standpoint. And then I got invited to conferences and things. I did two conferences and I just got tired of it. I realized that I could reach way more people from the comfort of my own home rather than going to these conferences and playing in front of a thousand people. I could reach hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions from the comfort of my own home. So I, I did turn up at conferences like, you know, with the, with the hat on and go, hey, man, man, it's nice to meet you, man. I'm Flat Earth, man. And, 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 and doing all that, you know, and getting up on stage and doing that. And it was quite funny for people to hear this North London guy or an Essex guy, like I'm from a London overspill Essex, uh, doing this country accent, which was really actually, uh, people genuinely thought I was from the deep south. So it was kind of curious to a lot of people. And, um, you know, that worked for a while, but I don't want to be typecast and just be the flat earth man like for the rest of my life. So I started playing with other characters and I wanted to show the world what I can do musically. So I then did some blue stuff and some folk stuff and some hard rock and some blah, blah. And, and, you know, so what a chasm apart, like something like I told you so, which is probably my most popular song on YouTube to true solfeggio, which is this mellow, chilled solfeggio healing music. I want to show everybody what I can do. So, you know, there may be more characters. I don't know whether to concentrate on the solfeggio healing stuff or I'm working on a music video now, which is incredibly funny and incredibly rude. It just, it's just what comes out, really. It's, it's, I use music to communicate. I'm not a talking head. I don't do very many interviews. I want to communicate like a, like a, I suppose, like a quote unquote true artist. I'm very introvert and I just want to use my music to, it's incredibly therapeutic. The whole Black Sheep album was me really just going, ah, wake up, wake up and just thrashing on a guitar, which sounded great in 432. It's just my evolution as an artist and it's just my thoughts into each album, what the next album would be. I don't know. I may go back to doing the comedy stuff. I don't know. It's just, it depends what mood I'm in, I guess. <laughs> to me, the Flat Earth Man album is the perfect teaching tool because it's not confrontational. It's tongue in cheek. And I played it for people who I know darn well think that you need a tinfoil hat if you're going to consider Flat Earth. But they were laughing and smiling the whole time. And I could see the idea going into them tracks like don't believe in gravity and again perfect teaching tool for young minds and the tongue-in-cheek aspect and the clever wording in which it's delivered it's just the the perfect tool to introduce these ideas out particularly to people who you know would think this is completely insane 
these ideas are insane, things like this, they put that seed and later they'll come back and think about it. They'll probably talk to other people about it. And that was the effect it had. When that first track hit in my timeline back in the day, I saw it get passed around so many times for like a month. It was just spinning and spinning around. I imagine millions of people must have experienced that. Do you have any idea of the counts on some of those videos? Did you get up into the millions? I mean, my channel as a whole has had something like 6 million views on YouTube, but we've got to think that if this stuff gets shared around on Facebook, and I've seen some of my videos on Facebook with a few hundred thousand views, and then you've got all these other platforms. So I'm sure it's in the millions now. And I was getting messages from from parents saying, I use your music to teach my children about these deceptions. And it was only then when I think I was on a stream with David Weiss and he said, have you ever thought about putting these, these, these music videos into children's books? Because children clearly love them. They resonate with the character and it's a great teaching tool. And that was, of course, David Weiss would come up with that idea and not me. I was like, oh, of course you're right, you bastard. He's good at that. <laughs> He's very, very good at that. He's incredibly he good at that. I don't know what he does. And then he, he sort of pushed me into a corner like where I, I had to do it because it was such a good idea. And I was like, oh, no, now I've got to really take a deep breath and learn how to publish books. And so I went through that for about six months. And But I was absolutely driven to do it. I put my heart and soul into it. And he was absolutely correct. And uh, six months later, I had seven children's books, you know, and they they're all stem from the, those music videos. And in those books, you have a, a QR code which you can scan and it will take you to the music video and you can sing along with Flat Earth Man and, 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 and learn a few things as well, you know. So it's a really good teaching tool. And uh, yeah, uh, so who would have thought I'd be doing things like that? If you just said I was doing stuff like that 10, to, 10 years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. Making children's books and teaching them about Flat Earth and NASA deception. I'd be like, you're crazy. But, but here we are. We live in a time now that the technology that you would have had to have a major studio to do the things that you did with all this stuff like any of this stuff, anything that we're doing now, even like these podcasts and everything, we live in a time where we have accessible tools that people couldn't even dream of. Like if this was the 90s when I first really started getting into music and all that, doing videos and green screening and all that kind of stuff without horribly lossy tapes and and multi-tracking like the way we had to do it back then, it's incredible what we could do now. Even just the platforms, like even though I, I don't respect Amazon and its owner, the capability to do things to get books out there in a way where you don't have to go chasing down a publisher to try and get signed to it. It's almost like getting a record contract at that point, which is, of course, its own terrible thing. I mean, I'm against Amazon as well. and I get criticism for for my content on Amazon, but I'm of the opinion that Amazon's not going anywhere. And this is where all the normies go. So if we're going to use Amazon, let's let's try and infiltrate. Let's try and be a a Trojan force into those platforms. It's the battleground. Yeah, let's put conscious content on there because it ain't going away. It's like AI. AI is not going away. So I used AI today, but I use it for the right reasons. That's the difference. So what's the difference if you use Amazon, if it's beneficial, then you should use Amazon. And by the way, I I was just reviewing this. I hadn't realized that your book series is actually breaking down. Uh, Each book seems to be geared to each song. And if you go to the website, Conspiracy Music, guru.com and you click on the books link, you can actually click through and get a look inside the book. And so it breaks out in the same way the album does. The first one's don't let them take your mind. The second one is, do you still believe we went to the moon? Third one, don't believe in gravity. I love that song. I have that in my car, actually. Uh, Next one is welcome to the satellite hoax, another classic. And then there's the puppet show, but it's a perfect teaching tool. You have the soundtrack, And then the books break out as a companion to that. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Again, it's another thing that I had to put my heart and soul into. It was a huge learning curve. But it's nice to know that those books are going to be out there and they can't be censored. They're going to end up on coffee coffee tables and in waiting rooms and stuff. And they're going to go from hand to hand and they're always going to be there. So who knows who's going to be picking them up and turning the pages and going, hmm, that's suspicious, don't you think? So the past episodes that we had Alex on with us was 189 and 411. And I think both of those have music in them, don't they, Jason? Pretty sure. Yeah, both episodes have several different pieces of music in them. I think the first Solfeggio tracks are in one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, in the first one. Yeah. So you can go back to episode 189 and 411 and also get samples of the work. But again, it's not the same as a clean, crisp recording done with all the right intentions. But so do you have a favorite track? 
You have seven tracks. Each one is seven minutes long. Uh, their titles are Questions, Finding My Way. I think Rush has a title called that. Uh, Voyage, Another Heart, Sun Gazing, Borealis, and Ends of the Earth. Do you have a favorite track within those, Alex? Oh, it's really tough because, like I said before, like everyone's my baby, you know, but uh, I do have a little love affair with track five. It's just kind of, I've, I've always loved that Dire Straits kind of Strat sound or that David Gilmore sort of, that slow-handed sort of, uh, it's almost vocal to a point, you know. In fact, I remember talking to Jason the other night when we was on a stream. Is when I go into the studio, I don't, I don't try and play a melody. I'll sing it first. This is how I want the guitar to sound. So I'll, I'll sing a vocal line. <laughs> or whatever so I, I want my guitar to emulate that that's why those sounds are kind of so they kind of they've got a nice vibrato to them and that just that i always love that gilmore sort of that vocal stratty throaty sound that gilmore and and, and mark Knopfler could create with some of dire straits is slow stuff like it. it's like I, I wanted to emulate that so there's really no such thing as an original song because i'm obviously influenced by you know particular artists that i've listened to over the years but i do have a soft spot for for track five which is sun gazing i believe that's jason's favorite track as well it's just yep. like that i don't know there's something to it so yeah if i was pushed gun to my head who's your favorite child you know <laughs> I, I, would, I would say uh, i would say five but it's so tough so tough you know it would be awesome uh have you ever seen the cymatics animations where they put up like beethoven and they show the cymatic patterns it would be fantastic to take one of these tracks and show the cymatic representation. I would love to see that. I would I would love to do my own cymatic experiments, and I did plan on doing that, but, oh, you know, you just kind of push it off and push it off. If there's, if there's anyone out there with a, with a cymatic plate or who's doing cymatic experiments with liquid and that sort of stuff and lighting, which I've seen people do online, you know, please use one of my tracks. I'd love to see what it looks like cymatically, but unfortunately I haven't got there yet. Now, that would, that would be a complete package. Like, instead of having something crappy on your big screen TV, which most households have, uh, have this music playing and have that big cymatic pattern demonstrating the proof of the beneficial value in geometry. Yeah, and I think you also have to get yourself in the acoustic sweet spot as well. If you were to sit in my studio and you sat directly in between having the speakers to the left and the speakers to the right, exactly the same distance from your ears and you sat, so that's how I, that's how I produce it. But who's going to do that unless you put some really good headphones on and, like you say, immerse yourself and close your eyes. But who's, who's really going to do that? But if that's, I think, when you're going to get the most uh, profound experience, if you know, particularly in my studio where I've got some volume there. And you could imagine what was going on in cathedrals, you know, when, when you're in the acoustic sweet spot, when they, these whole walls are resonating and the organ is blaring and the orchestra's playing and you're, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen in cathedrals, they've got like um, foot markers sometimes as to where to stand and not, not, not because of COVID. It's, I believe that's probably because you're in a, a sweet spot. I and mean, what would happen there if, you, if, you, if you've got this whole building resonating? You know, I believe these, these buildings were built and designed for resonance. That's a fact. And not only that, it's not just the music, but the intention of that whole congregation is also being amplified in that space. Very few people are aware that many of those cathedrals, there's as much below ground as they're above ground. And many of them had a water source up near the area you're talking about. Right. And the other thing I just learned as well was that some of these buildings and churches and temples were built using harmonic ratios. The Freemasons refer to these buildings as frozen music. So that what they would do, they would take a harmonic ratio of one to two, for instance. So the one being the, the first frequency, let's say four, three, two, and the two representing a frequency that vibrates twice as fast. So you'd have four, three, two, and then eight, six, four. That's what a harmonic ratio of one to two would be. And they was putting these harmonic ratios into the stru- into the designs of these buildings. There's many other harmonic ratios as well, three to four, six to seven, blah, 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 blah. But they're like timings, if you like. So I don't know exactly how it works from a construction point of view, but let's say you were building, you would put 10 columns and they were 10 foot tall. Well, you'd do another row of columns, which would double that. So they were putting these harmonic ratios into these cathedrals, into these temples, so that they would literally resonate with the harmonics that were being played by the organ or by the orchestra or by the choir. And now you've got a whole building that resonates and resonates. And you can think of the power of that and what the individual would be experiencing at that point, especially if they're on those little foot markers, 
you know, in the acoustic sweet spot. I mean, I can get you know, quite profound effects just from my little studio speakers. Now imagine a whole cathedral that is sympathetically resonating, harmonically designed with these ratios. What are we talking about there? I don't know. It's speculation from this point, but I can only imagine. Spiritual healing and lifting and health healing. You know, there's a clip somewhere. Do you remember, Jason? I think Eric Dollard was working on the cathedral audio issue. And there's a clip somewhere of him talking about just the power of sitting in that certain spot. And that's a reduced level in our time. And if you want to be fair, and I think this is perfectly fair to say, this kind of dark side world takeover we're seeing, what we're talking about is one of the places where it starts. They want a world that is absent of such things, bells that are in tune, cathedrals that lift you, literally lift you spiritually and heal you uh, using resonance and frequency. Those things had to go in the world up to where we are now, basically living in boxes and rectangles. So we could get back to a world of this. And what's interesting is people like you, Alex, are bringing the stepping stones back. Well, I know for a fact when people listen to this, they'll it's almost like you've never listened to music before in a way. When it first comes through those headphones, it's like, oh, wow, I'm used to Britney Spears or rap or something. This is a whole other thing entirely. And it's beneficial and it's meant to be beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. You, you were saying it, it could lift you spiritually. I'm wondering if it could actually lift you physically. You know, we, if you talk about acoustic levitation. Maybe even transportation. I know this is like real woo-woo talk, but why not? If, if, if the resonance is enough, think about things like the Philadelphia experiment, transportation. If, you, if the amplification is enough, then why not? Why not? So I, I, I'm at the point of questioning, like, what the hell was going on in these cathedrals? And, you know, that's why they were taking down all these bells. And the, I've seen yards and yards and, and, and yards of hundreds and hundreds of bells that have been taken down because when they played that, that gong in the village, it would have a healing effect. I mean, I don't know if you've seen those videos where there's a, a child crying and then into the frame would come a, like a Tibetan singing bowl and they'd just tap it with a little, I don't know, with a little sort of drum thing, with a little tapper, and instantly the child would calm. Now, I believe that's what was going on with church bells and in village squares and in public buildings and that sort of stuff. These bells would ring and it would give peace to the village, give peace to the, to the town. I live right near an old town where I am. And when the bells go off there, it's a bloody din. It's hideous. And you're like, it's so discordant. And you're sitting there having a beer in the town. And you're like, oh, God, I wish these things. It's just like so discordant. So I think there's something something to that. So uh, There is. Yeah, we're, we're way, 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 way past where, we're, where we were. God knows how long ago, 100, 200 years ago. Who, who knows? But uh, yeah, these, these places were definitely designed for healing and resonance. And you start turning up the amplification on that and then god knows what is possible especially when you look at the size of these organs and these pipes that were bellowing out it's like these things were designed for resonance that's what a pipe is a pipe is a resonant chamber you know there's an interesting word a chamber when you look at a pipe those organ pipes they have tiny little chambers in them so the frequency can go up the pipe and bounce around and by the time it comes out it's amplified it's a natural resonator and where else do we find chambers we find them in churches and cathedrals. You have the main chamber when you walk in. I think that's an interesting uh, observation. You know, we talked about the bells not too long ago. Anyone can go online, I think, if it's not been censored out. But there was a time when thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of bells were stolen or taken and apparently destroyed. And I experience exactly what you do now living in New England. If I'm over in Newport, there's still big bells. I can actually hear sometimes the bells come across the water if I'm in certain places and it's not in tune. It's discordant. And I suspect that the collection or stealing and destruction of all those old bells, you always hear this tell, oh, we needed to make cannons and other things you're told. But the sheer number of these bells, I suspect that they're in the vein of what we're talking about. They were tuned, they were beneficial, but we're coming to the top of the first hour. Alex, please tell folks where they can find you, your work, your books, your music, and so on. Thank you. Yeah, the main hub is conspiracymusicguru.com. Type that into your browser because you won't find it on Google. And when you go there, you'll find you'll find the tabs up the top that say albums and books and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, give it a try, man. You might be surprised. All right, uh, Jason, you want to add anything before I wrap up hour one? Just to finish that thought on the discordance of the music now, it seems post-World War II, 
Western society especially lost something when classical music was no longer something that was at the forefront. Yeah, we touched on that, didn't we, in, in episode 411, I do believe. I mean, how far we've come from higher-minded music where we, we have to have an entire orchestra all working together in unison. That was very, very high-minded stuff. And then fast forward 50 or 100 years and we have the Beatles singing, she loves you, yeah, 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 and I want to hold your hand. Toddler music, right? There it is. The fall of Western civilization. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to wrap up hour one. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back for hour two, and we're going to play some more tracks, among other things. Hour one is free to everybody at crow777radio.com. That is C-R-R-O-W-777radio.com. Members know to log in for the full two-hour, two-hour-plus two episode. Members get access to all the forums. They can create their own forums and threads, comments, and they can stream the two-hour film called Shoot the Moon anytime they like. That film has won 10 awards out in the world, and it covers all my previous telescope work. Also, members get exclusive access to my solar work that I'm doing now in regard to learning something true about the light of this world, our sun, and hopefully be able to nail down some true things about whatever that other body is. I'm reasonably sure it's a second sun. Uh, I have open admissions from an observatory that it's known at the highest levels and hidden. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back, hope to see you logged in as a member, and I'd like to wish you all a happy, healthy, and higher-minded new era. There it is, man. Cheers.